Okay. So here's the thing. I'm gonna need a raise. Consider it done. All right, everyone. Clouds in. The mission is on. Go and raise some hell for me, okay? <laughs> okay, we have finally reached the second bombing mission, but it did not exactly go off without a hitch. So, well, ghosts attack. We fought them off. Jesse got injured. Cloud got hired for the job. All right, let's get going. Sure. After you take a deep breath. Huh? I can tell you're nervous. That obvious, huh? Okay, I'm ready now. After all that shit happened, they're still going forward with the bombing mission. Now, of course, they did they kind of explain that away in saying that Biggs had already gone in. And if he's already in there, chance that if the mission doesn't go through that he'd be put in danger. So, I guess they feel they kind of got to go through with this mission, even though Jesse is injured. And I don't know if Wedge was going to stay behind or not. In the original game, all the members of Avalanche went in on this mission. Um, oh, hey. Got some real Biggs, nice Wedge, and Jesse never actually made it to the reactor. Although they did get off of the train, they were only sort of wandering around in the air ducts or whatever. This is the kind of thing that tends to happen a lot in these kinds of games. You have points of no return, where you're in a town and you have the opportunity to stock up on supplies for the next leg of your journey. But you will not be able to return back here once you move on from this point of the game. You can't simply turn around and run back to town. So it's important that you go and buy the supplies that you need, potentially get any kind of secrets or treasure chests or whatever in the area, because you won't be able to return here. These kinds of games, that sort of thing tends to happen to a lot. Now there are also yours. cases where you'll be able to leave town, see what it is that you're going to be facing up ahead, and then turn around and come back. That tended to happen quite a bit in the original Final Fantasy VII. But in this early portion of the game, it's pretty story-driven, so there's not so much of that. This game is seemingly trying to meld the two different concepts of story and gameplay loops in RPGs. There's a very Western style of RPG where it is a large open environment of some sort, and you make decisions on your own about progression. You go where you want to, you participate in whatever stories you want to. Although there is a main story, it tends not to be like a very strict focus of the game. Then there's the Japanese style, which tends to be quite a bit more linear, focusing more on character and and story and all that kind of stuff. Now, people have certain preferences for them, and there's been a strong push for the Western style with games like Skyrim, Fallout, The Witcher, research. that kind of thing. This game seems to try to be both, where it has the very linear portions of the game, like the bombing missions in the Mako reactors, and then it turns around and opens up like what it was in Sector 7 slums, where you have choices about what side missions you're going to go to, it's not a linear path getting through the towns, and all of that. We're about to progress into a linear section. Right, Mission starts the moment we board that train. Are you sure you're ready for this? Do you think Biggs is... on schedule? All we can do is hope. Today really gotta be the day, huh? Ain't no stopping this train we're on, son. A lot of people risk their lives to get it rolling. Already put the word out, more's coming too. Shut them all down by the day, but we shut another down for you. Ain't on us, not us. Play it cool. I just want to use this loading screen to make note that 
This is the first episode where I am using a different recording method. So the fidelity of video, the fidelity of the gameplay recorded, and the video itself is going to be higher. Hope you noticed. This is an announcement from the Shinra Electric Power Company. The terrorist group Avalanche has issued another bomb threat. In response, we have raised the threat level and entered a state of heightened alert. All lines are currently experiencing delays. We anticipate that our arrival in Sector 4 will be later than scheduled. The targets Marco Reactor 5. From the station, we take the back streets. Once we're inside the facility, it's the same deal as last time. Head for Marco storage. And then, blow it all to hell. Let's do this one for Jesse and Wedge. They deserve it. Yeah. Sure. I didn't think word would spread this fast. There's barely anyone on this train, and none of them look happy to be here. Might stand out as a group. You two stay here. <laughs> really, Barrett? Really? You think you can maintain a low profile here? For one thing, you're the size of Bob Sapp with a freaking Gatling gun for an arm. You're traveling around with this spiky-haired douchebag in an elite soldier's uniform and a sword the size of a damn tree trunk and a goddess with a miniskirt and a crop top. Everybody is looking at you. Everybody. Cloud. The train will be passing an ID checkpoint shortly. Here comes the first hurdle. Not much of one. I know, I know, but that doesn't mean I don't have butterflies in my stomach. <sighs> hey, would you mind keeping an eye on things the next car over? I'm worried there might be trouble. Why is that? Barrett's always on edge before missions, but you know he's a good guy underneath it all. The people on this train don't. They'll be fine. Maybe. But I won't be until I know for sure. Be right back. Thanks. Tifa, again, everyone's looking at you. Shut up about the mission. So, do you still support those terrorists? Avalanche is a flight on Midgar. Huh? Their bomb threat has thrown our offices into chaos, let alone the reactor itself. It's total insanity! But we won't lose heart. No! Everyone at Shinra agrees. The reactor will stay online. <laughs> is that right? Uh, what? Y you got a problem with that? Do I have a problem with that? Oh, you can bet. He doesn't. <laughs> Asshole. You know you're better than that. Oh my god, it's even worse than I thought. He just cannot keep him damn, his damn self calm, even for a damn train ride to the bombing mission. <laughs> I have nothing of course, more to this say to did happen in the original game. The Shinra manager here was just some no-name character that Barrett intimidated while on the train Please during this mission. Me. They gave him a little bit more dialogue here. Please don't hurt me. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Apparently this character figured it out. 
that these people are avalanche, but the friggin' manager didn't. Emergency ID scan in progress. Huh? <gasps> no way! Emergency ID scan in progress. Unauthorized IDs detected. Threat level critical. <laughs> Inspection and containment sweep initiated. Commencing at the rear of the train. Not clear! Get over here! Now! Take care of them, Cloud! Fought it. There were not any fights that took place on the train in the original game. And I don't recall any enemy that looked like these slug rays appearing. Appears to be a new creation for the sake of, uh, for the sake of this game. It's very- whoa, he almost cut Tifa's head off. <laughs> very confining in here. You can't really dodge, you just have, sort of have to block or attack. Two and a half minutes, that gives us a whole lot of time here. A whole lot of time. You have to get out of here. What are you doing? Trying to keep you alive. But I work for Shinra. I'm the enemy. I don't care. I don't want anyone to die. Please. I'll look after the others. My turn. There's no end to them. Three unauthorized passengers successfully contain neutralizing threats. Looks like you're right, soldier boy. Screw this. The station will be crawling with security. We gotta jump. Screw that. We need to slow the train down. Sounds like a big plan E. <laughs> Okay, y'all want to know. I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna show you how it's done. Tifa. Ready? Once you jumped off the train in the original game, it did calm down. Well, in, in a sense, it calmed down. While the um, hectic, like the sirens and the timer that you had to get between the train cars disappeared, you did encounter fights once you got off the train. But it didn't have this sort of like frantic, you're being chased down kind of pace. I feel like the original game slowing down the tension in the scene once you got off the train was probably intentional. And it seems kind of counterintuitive, but you don't want to maintain a whole lot of um, energy in a scene as you're progressing for too long of a period of time. Now you'd think during this mission you'd want everything to be like, it's dangerous, you want it to feel dangerous the entire time. but. If you do that for too long, it starts to become boring or tiring for the player. So you want to split it up. You want to have high action scenes and then low action scenes to let the player sort of rest a little bit. Now, well, stop for this uh, vending machine here in the subway. Like it's weird that that's there. Not that this scene, this game here, won't slow down. It'll eventually abate. Just give it time. Thanks for when we jump from the train. No big one. You're pretty light now. You always know what to say. Cloud seems to be a freaking pro about not responding properly to the obvious attraction that these women have for him. Holy shit! I wonder if it's possible to get hit by that train.
<laughs> well done, well done. I felt sure we had them, didn't you? Sir. Born survivors, these surats. Speaking of which, where's the third? In custody, sir. Return it to the wild. Yes, sir. Right away. <laughs> Our friends in Sector 5 mark the route, so don't worry about getting lost. It's a straight shot to victory, people! All we gotta do is take it!